This is your host, Sapnil Bharatiya, and welcome to State of Energy. And our guest today is Dr. Marco Mula, CEO of Pionics GmbH. Marco, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, thanks for having me here, Swap. There is so much to talk about today, but uh, before we go anywhere, uh, please tell me a bit about uh, the company itself. What do you folks do? We are focusing on an open source operating system for charging stations. So for electric cars, AC chargers, or super fast DC chargers, the idea is having a firmware sitting in these boxes, which is open source. So that's why we're here today. Exactly. Uh, and one of the projects that, you know, uh, we are going to talk about is Everest that you folks contributed to the LF Energy Foundation. Uh, talk about the origin, the genesis of the project. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, everything that you folks do is open source. So why you end up creating this project? What is it all about? Yeah, so so we had an industry consulting project before and we thought about how to basically create a new charging station company and bring it up on speed on a technological level. And we realized, actually, it makes no sense to create this technology stack all and all over again. So what you really need is a tra transition to something more sustainable, not only the energy, but also engineering and software-wise. I have been in the drone space before, and I saw the entire industry disrupting, starting with basically doing everything ourselves, 2009. And 10 years later, just everything has switched to, switched to open source. And I'm pretty sure most industries need that disruption. And we're here to do that in charging. When you do talk about charging industry, uh, uh, how how different it is, you know, and also when you build Everest, what was the need to build it? Um, just, just, you know, because sometimes with most open source projects, everybody starts with scratching your own itch. And then you see that, you know, it can solve someone else's problem as well. That's when you release something in open source. Yeah. So, so what we saw, basically, let me start from a customer perspective. Those who don't have an electric car at home, maybe don't know the pains you can go through if you try to charge your car publicly. Um, if I'm on the highway with my kids with an electric car, I think 30% of the time charging just doesn't work. And that can be really painful, especially if you're driving it down really close to zero. And I think most of the time it's just software issues. So there's so many car manufacturers out there, so many charging station manufacturers out there. I think we're talking about just in Germany, maybe 200 companies. And everyone, or most of them are creating kind of a software stack on their own. So everyone is doing their own interpretation of the standards. Everyone is doing their own bugs. And there's, yeah, basically a need of having a core library, which abstracts all of that away. And charging is also quite interesting because such a charging station is not just speaking to a car. It's also speaking to your home solar system. It's speaking to some cloud components for um, making payments. It's speaking to a mobile app. It's maybe speaking to your grid provider to find out when electricity is cheap or if there's a demand shortage or demand peak. And so there's so much interconnection, and I think it's a really interesting problem to solve. Uh, if you can just go a bit deeper in the tech detail, that what exactly Everest? Because as you mentioned, though, it can not, it's not just about the car; it can be about anything else. So I just want to understand that what exactly is from technical perspective Everest. So from technical perspective, uh, we have a software stack uh, sitting on top of a, at the moment Debian distribution Linux. Uh, it is an MQTT framework we're using, so coming from the I IoT space. So we have different modules you can configure. There's, let's say, different power in modules, maybe for home solar. Maybe you have a parking garage with many cars and you have to share energy. So we have a framework where you can just basically wire the reality with software modules together. And then there are different software modules, let's say, for speaking to different kinds of clouds, uh, speaking to different way of communicating with the car. So for the cloud side, that would be OCPP 1.6, JSON security we implemented. Speaking to the car, we have, um, we're have we working on the ISO 15.11.8 standard. All of that will be open sourced. And uh, on the cloud side, uh, sorry, on the energy side, for local energy stuff, we're speaking uh, SunSpec and Modbus, which is a standard for connecting to home solar systems. And yeah, on the energy grid side, we are not done yet. Uh, we're thinking about something like ADR, open ADR, which is also part of LF Energy, which maybe brings us here, why we are part of this ecosystem. 
And but this will be really extendable. So everything will be not just open source, but also Apache 2.0 licensed. So especially for commercial vendors, it should be really easy to adapt. And that's kind of our idea that there are already, I think, two open source stack for AC chargings out there. Um, but license wise, it's really hard for um, for industry players to adapt them because they're running GPL code, which makes a lot of people uncomfortable in, in business. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, it's running on Debian. So I also understand where does it really actually run? Everest. So it actually runs in the charging station. So basically there's a small, at the moment, Raspberry Pi in our current setup in the charging point. And yeah, it basically runs between your car and your wall or between the car and the the super, basically in the supercharger at the side of the street. Um, but it's not tailored to our hardware. So what we're doing as a company, beside the open source project, we're also offering a dev kit, uh, which enables our community to get super fast started with this. So basically it comes with a lot of things you actually don't need in typically charging situations, like has a GPS module, a power line communication with the car, and a Raspberry Pi compute module for, um, which comes with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and LAN and whatever. Uh, it has an RFID reader, two displays, one of that is touch. So it comes with a lot of things included. So you can play around with that and build whatever charging solution that you have in mind. If you have the idea to build some Bitcoin payment for car charging, sure, you can do that. You can use our software stack and basically just have to swap out one module against something tailored for Bitcoin payment, and then you're ready to go. And as you started earlier that, you know, uh, if you own an electric car, uh, charging can become a big challenge. And even if you look at the Everest project, as you said, it runs on, you know, the charging stations. Uh, now, the charging stations are deployed depending on where you are, different companies. So you have to also work with ha hardware vendors to embrace it. So can you also talk about what kind of ecosystem is around? How are you working with that community? Because creating open source stack is easy but getting it in the machines is challenging part. So um, as a company, we basically started with this idea about a year ago, uh, stumbling into this uh, through some demand from a consulting project. And we re quickly realized that this is a common problem along all the players out there. So everyone we're talking to is highly embracing like, okay, when can I get it? When can I get Git access? And that's something we want to do next year to provide publicly broad Git access. And so far, basically everyone is just eagerly to wait because they're all kind of sick of just implementing the same standards over and over again. Just to give you an idea, we talked to, to a cloud provider and they mentioned they have more than 200 different adapters for different dialects of the same standard because everyone is doing it slightly different. And I think... It's a bit like the modern web browser revolution. The moment everything is running Chromium in the core, so the, the need of different compatibility tests went dramatically down. And I think that's something we can bring to the charging industry. And it's free for everyone. So everyone can just pick it up on Git. I mean, we're here to help. If everyone needs our support to getting it integrated in their boxes, you can ask us. Um, but the idea is, I think open source can really help boosting this into the market and basically drives a new really quick sanitization or sodium de facto sanitization and actually helps energy transition, which is also part of LF energy emissions. So I think we are, we are in a good um, company. <laughs> Why you chose to put this project in LF energy? Did you work with them before or, you know, just talk about, you know, why you put it there? Yeah, so at the beginning, we thought about, okay, how to build a good community and how to do that. We have been with other corporates before. I have worked with Intel in the last uh, three, four years or for Intel and realized that big corporates actually love compliance and love processes and love to have a legally safe ground. And this is, I think, something LF Energy and Linux Foundation can provide. And also they know how to build a community and how to interconnect companies. And that's really something helping us uh, on our mission to build this community. And yeah, to make Everest and the software stack yeah, widely used all over the world. And uh, yeah, that's when we ever, when, when Shuli, so the head of LF Energy got aware of us, uh, we started talking and that was, 
I would say, love from the first second. Uh, so I think that both of us realized we could be a great benefit for each other. What kind of support are you expecting from LF Energy? LF Energy is part of the Lynx Foundation, so they have very good governance and structure in place. But tell me, what plans do you have with this project? So, yeah, basically this project is, its role is to connecting different industries. So it will connect the energy industry, payment stuff, uh, renewable energy sources, car vendors, and LF Energy is quite well connected in the energy industry. So this is a big benefit beside all of the government stuff. Uh, for sure, the government helps, as I said before. Um, but also like, yeah, I think changing the electric grid to fully embrace the potential of electric cars, which let's say for Germany, I have the numbers in mind, it might be something like 20% more energy consumption or more electric energy consumption. So it's not about a big jump in demand. It's all about, uh, it's, it's different demand, different timing. In the future, it also can provide energy back to the grid whenever it's needed. So electric cars could be a big game changer for the future power supply. And I think that's something we can really do in this team with all the other projects. And you already mentioned that the scope goes beyond just charging stations. So if you look at this project, what kind of community are you looking that, you know, these are the people, these are the developers who will be interested in this project or what kind of community you want to build around Everest project? So basically we think that, that will be a really broad community. As I said before, we're connecting different industries. I think at the core of this is like the people or the companies integrating that in their charging point solution. If it's maybe their charging controller or if it's their entire wall box, supercharger, whatever, I think developers from them, that would be a bit big benefit because they're at the forefront. But I think also like car OEMs, if some of the car OEMs have a big idea, like we want to get the infrastructure ready for some new types of car in 10 years from now, they can just donate the patch to the charging stations into such a project. And with over-the-air update, that will be proliferating or distributing along the entire charging station network cross vendors quite quickly. And also what I saw in the drone space before where I worked, that um, universities are picking up this code base and using it for their own research, like how to make future charging. So they're implementing their ideas based on top of open source and donating results back. And this really brings such a stack and the, the ideas really quickly into market. So we're also inviting all researchers doing something with energy, with cars, yeah, to use that to challenge us, to challenge Everest and to make it larger and greater. If somebody is interested, or first of all, what kind of people you would like to come and join you? And if they do want to, how they can get involved with the project? So the project is publicly on GitHub. Um, so you can just start downloading it, play with it, as um, issue some tickets. Um, there will be contact details, how it can reach us in the project. And so there's highly interest from us. If you just want to get your hands dirty, just try it out. Uh, there are software in the loop simulations. There will be, if you're interested, a development kit available from Pionix. Um, yeah, and basically everyone from someone who's writing documentation, from someone who's testing it with his cars, someone who's ri writing patches for getting compatibility there, or porting it to different hardware, adding some new algorithms for smart charging, whatever. I think this is a big network of modules you have to plug together to make it ready for all applications out there. And we're interested in everything. We are talking a lot about climate change. You know, a lot of companies, they have their missions of decarbonization. They want to cut their, you know, carbon footprint. But sometimes, as you gave example of finding a charging station can be challenging. It can sometimes deter people, you know, Move that. So this may be a small project in this big mission, but how do you see that these kind of project kind of or companies like yours contribute to solving this much larger problem? Actually, that's an interesting question. I spending a lot of my free time in the Scientists for Future organization uh, to explain people climate change and to actually work against that. And I think projects like this are engineering puzzle pieces to make the transition to a green future happen. And I think there's so much potential, especially if you look on electrification, on electric cars, on the green grid. 
and green power generation. So I think this could be a big game changer. I think the, the things we need will happen anyway. The standards are there, the ideas are there, but at the moment, the solutions are so cluttered and so incompatible. And I think software stack like Everest can boost a lot of those changes by five years. And climate change is all about timing. So I think it can have a big impact. Excellent. Marco, thank you so much for taking time out today to not only talk about the Everest project, of course, the company, and also how you're kind of playing a role in solving a much bigger problem. So thanks for your time today, and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Swapan.